Hello, spooky people. We are living our best lives over here. <laughs> um, I was having the worst freaking, I told you earlier, I was having the worst time trying to upload the YouTube video oh, yeah. um, for the Blue Whale Challenge. So um, that's how far we are into recording is I'm still worrying about <laughs> posting that um, because my, app, my iCloud storage was full and I pay extra or did I tell you that I pay <laughs> extra and it's still not enough for like 50 gigabytes. It, it told me a couple of days ago that it was full and now I have to keep like deleting, deleting stuff. Yeah. I have to Marie Kondo. My Maybe we should do it with phone, my <laughs> phone. We can. Cause I have hella storage. I just started um, putting all my pictures on Dropbox. So it's taking a long time for everything to upload, but okay. well, it I mean, should be fine. I mean, things are, Worst comes to worst, we can use my phone because I have a lot of storage for no reason. Okay, good to know. <laughs> um, okay, so I think we're just going to jump right into this because I think it will probably be a pretty quick episode. Um, but also, I want to watch a scary movie after, and it's already late, so. <laughs> That's true. Um, well, we couldn't find a good one. Well, I mean, we could watch whatever. Yeah, okay. we could do whatever. Um, so we're going to do several parts for this topic just because there's a lot of information. So today's episode might be shorter than usual just because it's just the very like beginnings of it. It's, it doesn't go into too much detail. And I know nothing about this. I just know that he's a magician. <laughs> <laughs> so our topic today is That's all Houdini. I know. That's all <laughs> I know. Um, um, the way that I discovered this was kind of random. I hate to keep bringing it up, but that podcast I listen to, I don't want to copy them, but they do really interesting topics and it gets me excited to cover them. So what's so it called again? Too. And that's why we drink. Yes. I so, uh, yes, there's, um, two people that do it and one does the paranormal stories. The other one does the true crime stories in the same episode. And um, they cover Houdini, and uh, M covers the story. M does the paranormal stuff. And um, they said that they didn't know this either. And I was surprised because Christine had known it that Houdini um, got into some paranormal stuff during his career. And I guess he got into quite a bit. Didn't he escape whatever. Alcatraz? Did he? I don't know that much of the magic portion. Oh, I thought he escaped <laughs> Alcatraz. Um, but yeah, so he he got into like de debunking like mediums, which was really interesting to me. Oh, he that. debunked them. Yes. Ooh. Yes. It's tea. really interesting. The cheese I may. didn't know it at all. I had no idea. Yeah, I was like, I've only ever known him as a magician. I didn't know he got into like the woo-woo kind of stuff. Woo-woo-wee-wee. <laughs> so, um, so that's our topic for today. And then the cow is called showbiz, um, appropriately named. So we're just going to get into what I think. Um, we're going to use white cranberry. You can use grapefruit like in the recipe it calls for grapefruit juice but i don't particularly like grapefruit i don't either we didn't have any <laughs> so we're just gonna use the same white cranberry that took us so long to find last time um, and then it also calls for the creme de cassis and some vodka so very simple drink we're just gonna put some lovely ice into our shakers why is mine so large I don't know. That's one of the extras that we had. Oh, that we had here. There goes some ice. <laughs> um, yeah, we have an extra at home here, but you can probably buy your own if you want. I mean, I don't, I don't want to use all of it because I know you like a <laughs> fuck ton of ice in your <laughs> drink. I do. I really do. <laughs> I'm a thoughtful person. <laughs> Um, Do you okay. want your jigger? I would like my okay. jigger, yes. I have um, my ratchet jigger from Sheen. It's cute. It's like a little Also, mini these cups. This one's plastic. That one's glass. There is a little bit of a 
translation lost in there. I think. Yeah, it was a little confusing. Do you want to do the vodka first? It's one and a half ounces. This vodka. is one, right? Yes. Let me pour over this. Measure with your heart and soul. One. And one half. Get that shit to the brim. <laughs> Vodka everywhere. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, the only thing that keeps coming into my mind is the, that same video. <laughs> Two what? shots. Yeah, me too. Of vodka. Yeah, and then the... I always think of the TikTok of Elmo, like, by the dishwasher, and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> he sent that to me, and I watched it. It was so it. funny. It's really funny. So funny. <laughs> uh, um, okay, and then the creme de cassis, um, it said two-thirds ounces, and I am, I'm not very good at math, if you couldn't tell, so I'm not quite sure how much that translates into, but for the TikTok, we used half an ounce, so... It's up to you if you two like thirds. this flavoring. I feel like that looks like two thirds. Measure with your heart, Carly. Okay. You said you really liked this um, liqueur. Oh, so yeah. You it's can sweet. use a little more, probably. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to use a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to pour a little more than half an ounce. And pour that in. Oh, did you put the thing on this? Yeah. Oh, sick. <laughs> you just noticed? Yeah. Yeah, because the vodka one has this little, like, fake right. plastic one, so. Oh my gosh, how fancy. Yeah, really nice. I should keep buying more. You should. They're Thank literally, you. like, 75 cents, so. Oh, yeah. Then buy a bunch more. I shop on Chain for everything. Don't judge me. <laughs> um, okay, so then the white cranberry. I'm just going to put, um, we should probably put the two. Yeah, I'm just going to put two these glasses are kind of small okay I'm gonna do two as well one Wait, a little bit more I missed Ooh, almost <laughs> spilled that okay okay and then it's time to shake 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 Shake, senora, shake your body right. My hand is not large enough. <laughs> Can you? Because I can't. <laughs> yeah, do it this way. It makes me nervous. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> I don't know. What if it flies off? That happened last think. time. Well, well, I don't know. Just talk about that one. Um, okay, do you want ice in yours? Yeah, but not as much as you. Okay. That's good. Okay. I put so much ice in there. I know. <laughs> Listen, it needs to happen. Girl, that's why I saved the rest for you. <laughs> I was like, she really likes ice. <laughs> I really do. Hold on. There's something that is not invited to this party is on that ice. Ew. It's my it's my own hair. Oh. <laughs> I just don't want it in my drink. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you know what? You're right. Okay. Mm. Okay. Pour her in. Cute little color. Really similar to last week's, but I don't care. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Then you put your little, your little wedges in. We only had cuties, so that's what we're using. <laughs> but you can use whatever you'd like. Eventually, we'll get a little more professional. Oops. Maybe some real oranges. Listen, I warned them last time that we were not a professional bar, so. Okay, perfect. Should, it smells good. I wouldn't hold us to that. Ooh, good. It's I really like similar it. to last one, so you should you should like it. Because you really liked last one, huh? Yeah. This one's really good, though. The cuties are a good touch. Like, you can taste them. Oh, yeah. I like it. Delicious. Okay. Start it again. There we go.
I'm so excited. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. If you guys can't tell, there was a problem with our video. The audio cut out at like 15 minutes while we were recording this episode. So that's why we're in different outfits. We recorded for like, it was like an hour and a half. Yeah. And just over. <laughs> yeah, it was real great. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be periodically checking each other. Yours is on. So that's good. Mine is on. So yeah. hopefully things stay fine. We're annoyed, but we're living through it. <laughs> For you, I guess. Uh, we're dedicated, so we returned to re- regale you this tale of Houdini. We returned to do the same exact thing again. Literally, like two weeks later. <laughs> not <laughs> because even. we wanted to not do this so badly. Um, I don't know if that's an ADHD thing. Like, do you get in? Like, I never rewatch movies unless I'm really, really in the mood. I haven't seen mm. it in a long time because I already know what's going to happen and it annoys me. Sometimes. See, I rewatch everything over and over and over again. So I can't. Like, well, that's the. I think that's. But I read that that's an anxiety thing. I oh yeah, like how it, I know how it ends, so mm. I like watching it because I have seen Vampire Diaries. I'm I shit you not, like five times all the way through season eight. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I will restart things, but then I get bored because I already know what's happening. So. Then I stop. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> like, I like halfway watch through again. <laughs> okay, I get that. It's just I like it. like New Girl. Also, I've seen that a million mm. times just because I don't like watching new things. That's fair. I used to do that a little more than I do now, but now I have to watch something new. I just get bored. Um. Anyway, we 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 made our cows. Um, I added seltzer to mine this time because I you know, wanted to too. live on the wild side. <laughs> Did it with mine too? No. Did you add something to yours? No, I'm just drinking it. Am I supposed to add something? Oh, why does it look so full? It was like this way full. Are you sure you didn't add something? I swear to God. Did I add some to yours? I think you did. I did. Oh. <laughs> um... Anyway, I have a surprise for you. I zhuzhed up my notes so everything's not exactly the same. <gasps> Ooh, how exciting. I spent a long time <laughs> looking through the same research to find better wording and a little more detail on some stuff. I have some Sick. pictures for you. Ooh. So hopefully you won't be as bored. <laughs> As we expect it to be. Well. <laughs> um, so we might as well just get right on started. So uh, we're going to start our story off with spiritualism, just because I don't know where the other one cut out. So we, we might as well just start over. Um, spiritualism was a social religious movement in the 19th century. It was kind of described as like an individual's awareness persists after death and they may be contacted by the living. So that was a big thing because um, one of the world wars was happening. People were passing away, obviously, very quickly. People didn't want death to be the end of everything. They wanted to be able to contact their loved ones. Um, And they kind of described the afterlife as like the spirit world. where it was a place where spirits like continue to evolve like the other side Mm -hmm. like vampire diaries the other side yeah but there they're stagnant this one your soul continues to like evolve oh so you grow and kind of get more close to being on the path of like where a god would be because you would know everything so they think that the spirit world is like a higher plane where you can ask spirits and like questions and then they'll answer you because they're like all knowing. Um, and this kind of started in New York, uh, kind of where like the second great awakening was happening. Um, it happened alongside like Mormonism and like all those other things that kind of popped up during the second great awakening. And, um, 
one of the main things that they believed also was that God would not behave harshly, like he wouldn't condemn babies to hell for not being baptized. Oh my God. Which is what Christian, like Christians believe. So Jesus, <laughs> that's why Christians get baptized because if you don't get baptized, you go to hell. Right. So, so if you're not baptized and you're like six months old, you're going to hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, I mean, I don't know so much Christianity, but Catholicism. Yeah. Yeah. So spiritualism was kind of this new free like experience, you know, people were like, oh, um, my loved one continues like being aware of their surroundings. They can still communicate with me. Like, I mean, awesome. I would much rather that than because I didn't dunk my baby in holy water. She has to go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like it's like, you know how people nowadays are like, I'm spiritual. I feel like it's the same thing, you know? Mm. Um, like the whole aura and everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, seances and Ouija became really popular. Um, however you want to pronounce it, Ouija. I am going to pronounce it Ouija. It's Ouija. I think technically it's pronounced like Ouija. No, it's Ouija. <laughs> <laughs> For our purposes, it is. Um, con artists obviously started tricking people into... Um, doing these seances with them because they were like, oh, I can contact your loved one. Come talk to me uh, whenever you have a question, you know? So they got, <laughs> they got um, conned quite a bit. And uh, you'll find out in the rest of the story, you'll find out because <laughs> Carly already I knows. already know. <laughs> um, Not by choice. <laughs> I wish I was finding out the first time. <laughs> um, but it was quite a big thing. And um, so ultimately, this movement was for people who rejected organized religion and um, they were for the cause of like abolishing slavery, women's right. It was like the, the quote unquote, like Gen Z thing to do like now, mm -hmm. you know. So um, a lot of people also think that people really enjoyed it because it gave women more power in the community because most of the mediums were female. Um, so they could kind of feel nice about manipulating people. <laughs> Feminism, bitch. Yeah. Um, so in London in 1862, there was this club founded called the Ghost Club. And the focus of this club was to conduct a scientific study of alleged paranormal activities in order to prove or refute the existence of paranormal phenomena. And there were a bunch of famous members. There was Charles Dickens, Sir William Crooks, Sir William F. Barrett, and Harry Price, who um, I'm sure we'll talk about in a, one of the next parts because he becomes a big part of this whole like community. Um, and then Marie Curie and Pierre Curie attended seances in Paris. So big scientific people were still pretty intrigued and they thought that this was like reality. Um, a New York City physician named John Franklin Gray was also a spiritualist. And at some point, Thomas Edison even believed that he could create a spirit phone, which would be an ethereal device that would summon the voices of the dead and record them for posterity. So pretty much like a seance, but on your phone. <laughs> and it recorded them? He wanted to create it. He never was successful. Well, I don't know how you would be successful with that. I mean, it, for people that believed that it was a reality, it is just a matter of inventing it. So that brings us to the Society of Psychical Research, which was founded in London as well in 1882. And they got so into it that they even set up a committee on haunted houses specifically. So they were like really into investigating whether or not this was a reality. And um, a bunch of professional researchers became investigators for this movement. There was Frank Podmore and again, Harry Price from the um, National Laboratory of Psychical Research. And even professional conjurers um, were part of the investigations. Mm -hmm. So... How does one Magicians. become a, 
professional conjurer? Um, I guess you just get really good at illusions, like mm. Houdini. Because, I mean, technically he would be a professional conjurer, except he was more of an, an escape artist, yeah. like, in that category. When I think of know? conjurer, I think, like, you're bringing the spirits in. I think conjuring is more defined as, like, you make things appear out of nowhere. Oh. Like the rabbit thing. Oh. Yeah. I think that's what it means. Well, I don't know. I just think it could be what you said. (laughs) Um, So there was a John Neville Maskelin who exposed Davenport brothers by explaining their tricks from the audience. So much like Houdini, he'd sit in the audience at these people's um, shows and he'd be, and he'd just explain the, the tricks that they were doing in real time. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Hereward Carrington exposed fake mediums tricks like table turning, slate writing, trumpet mediumship, sealed letter reading, and spirit Trumpet mediaship? So wait, wait. when we first recorded this, I had explained um, one of the guys who was foiled by Houdini. Mm-hmm. And I remember I said he would use this trumpet and he would like whisper into the trumpet yes. and say that it was the voices of the dead, but it was really just him <laughs> whispering. <laughs> so in that case, I think they use a trumpet so that the spirits can either blow into the trumpet and be like, oh, like, obviously I'm not touching it. It must be the spirits. Or they would use this like megaphone style, like cone trumpet. And like you would hear voices coming out of it. Okay, so here word Carrington exposed fake mediums tricks like the trumpet mediumship, the sealed letter reading, spirit photography, all that good stuff. And that brings us to Harry Houdini. In the 1920s, he undertook a pretty popular campaign to expose these frauds. And he was so adamant uh, that he stated up to present time, everything that I have investigated has been the result of deluded brains. Damn. So he was serious about this. I mean, uh, good for him, dude. Yeah, I mean, he was he was really serious about it. So it sounds like he had fun from what I'll be describing. I mean, I'd have fun exposing people too. <laughs> It feels good to get the truth out of people. Yeah. You're like, we've been fucking with all these people all this time. (laughs) Guess what? I found out. (laughs) Especially over something like this where you're like literally lying to people that only want to talk to their loved ones. Yeah, Vulnerable people. Yeah. That's horrible. Yeah. Um, So Harry Houdini was born Eric Weiss on March 24th, 1874 in Budapest Kingdom of Hungary to a Jewish family. His parents were Rabbi Mayer Samuel Weiss and Cecilia Steiner. And he was one of seven children, so very big family. They arrived in the US in 1878 in July on the SS Frisia. And it was him, his mom and four brothers. And she was pregnant at the time with another sibling. I'm not sure, again, if his father was included in that situation or if he came later or earlier. Um, It didn't mention whether or not he was on the boat with them, but obviously he ended up there. (laughs) Um, They changed their name to the German spelling. So instead of a Z at the end of Weiss, they just had it become two S's and Eric was spelled with a C-H. It became E-R-I-K. So simple for people to pronounce and they began living in Appleton, Wisconsin, where his father serviced as a rabbi of the Zion Reform Jewish congregation. So he continued being a rabbi in Wisconsin. Again, I don't know why they moved to Wisconsin. Seems like a pretty random place to move, especially for a rabbi and his family. (laughs) I don't know if there are a lot of Jewish people in Wisconsin, Um, but I guess it was, it was a good place to be. Um, So he became a Hungarian-American escape artist, a man of magic, stunt performer. 
Um, we're all pretty familiar with his escape acts. You usually see him with like the chains all over his body. Straight jacket and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, his stage name is a reference to his spiritual master, French magician Robert Houdin. Um, and initially he was a trapeze performer. He performed oh. in circuses. Wow. Real fun. He wasn't very successful on his own at first <laughs> with, with like his magic shows as far as oh, I know. Okay. I'm not sure how he did at the trapeze stuff. <laughs> but I guess pretty okay if he was performing in circuses. Yeah. And he didn't, I didn't see anything about him getting fired anyway. Yeah, so. So. Um, as far as the magic goes or like the escape acts or anything, it like not a lot of people came to see him at first. It was really quiet. Um, he met his wife because of a show gone wrong. Um, you remember the acid incident? Oh, yes. I meant to look that up further, but I didn't have time to. I'm not sure why he was using acid in his performance, but um, she was like part of the audience. He spilled some acid on her dress. Yes, and yes, I remember. His mother offered to like make her a new dress to replace it and um they just got really close and they ended up getting married her name was wilhelmina runner but she is also referred to as beatrice houdini later on so i'm not sure if she changed her name also um and then she eventually did become like his stage assistant as well and um he first became known as Harry Handcuff Houdini on a tour of Europe, and he challenged the police to lock him away pretty often. He pretty soon after that escalated to more dangerous acts that we're more familiar with, um, including like ropes slung from skyscrapers and the straight jackets underwater situations. And then by the 1900s, he had thousands of people watching him, so he got pretty popular pretty fast. And he would escape handcuffs, being buried alive, all that good stuff. Um, many people thought that these acts were fake, but Houdini soon proved them wrong by becoming the ultimate spiritual debunker. And <laughs> as you heard, he oh, got yes. really intense I with that. it. Um, he was really strong and really agile, and he had a really extraordinary skill for manipulating locks I guess which is how he became such a good escape artist so um, it was really easy for him to kind of suss out the fakes and there's a quote where he says um, you need a flim flammer to catch a flim flammer <laughs> wait what <laughs> Uh, yeah, you need a flim flammer to catch a flim flammer, I think was the quote. So he was obviously like, well, you need someone who tricks people to tell you who's tricking you, <laughs> which makes sense. You need a flim flammer to catch a flim flammer. Evidently. Um, I'm going to start using that. I'm going to add that <laughs> in my vocabulary. You should add it to our bio. <laughs> yes. On everything. Flim flammer. Um, he was so good that he even threatened to sue people who imitated his escape acts. Wow. So he was a very serious man <laughs> in all aspects of his Honestly, career. Honestly, I, I would be too, dude. Like you're you're lying. I did this purely because I can. You can't. True. Can't do it as good as me, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Um and then I guess he was a little bit of like a movie star. He made some movies which kind of like showed off these abilities but when he wasn't making enough money he decided not to act anymore <laughs> which is fair fair enough um, sounds like now <laughs> yeah oh, pretty much um, times haven't changed that much i don't i don't know if he was an aspiring like actor i think he was just like well i just want, want to be really good at this so yeah here it is um i think he just really wanted to be famous well when he was a young boy I remember reading that he really wanted to be, like, a really good magician. <laughs> um, like, he, he named himself after this guy, like, well, his good idol. good for him, man. He achieved so, that. Yeah, he did. Plus a bunch of other things. Like, he was an actor. It, he apparently was also an aviator. <laughs> he flew planes, I guess. 
He wanted oh, to be that. the first man to fly a powered aircraft in Australia. I don't think he was the first one to do it. But I don't think so either. Um, he also eventually became president of the Society of American Magicians. And um, they were kind of tied to this magazine that eventually would offer a cash prize to anyone who could prove that they could interact with paranormal entities. And so when his mother passed away, he became really, really interested in spiritualism and contacting the, the departed because he was dear, like near and dear with her. And um, being friends with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, he was like, I think that I'm just going to go check out all these mediums because uh, Doyle firmly, firmly believed that spiritualism was real and that all, all of these mediums were telling the truth. And um, Houdini, as he started seeing people, eventually just decided that all of them were fake. <laughs> Which, Fair enough. I guess was true. Um, he thought that every medium he saw was an illusionist, like he was, and he wanted to expose them because they preyed on people's sadness, which is a valiant effort on his part. Um, in 1924, he wrote a book among a couple books called A Magician Among the Spirits to expose fake psychics at home. So you could take this book home, read it, and like figure out these tricks that these people were using. So if you went to go see a medium, you could be like, I know that trick, get out of here. <laughs> um, and he had some people that were helping him. One among them was named Rose Mackenberg. And he helped her understand illusions for a case that she was working on. She worked pretty closely with um, like the court system on like legal matters. And she needed help with one of these cases that involved illusions and he helped her and he liked her so much that he recruited her to be part of his team of um, people uncovering these <laughs> fake <laughs> mediums. <laughs> um ghostbusters <laughs> yeah pretty much the, the og ghostbusters <laughs> um, and between 1925 and 1926 he had all these undercover agents and he would have them go to like a town that he was supposed to be going to for a show and he would be like check out all of the local mediums i'm gonna send you here like 10 days ahead of me just check them all out and let me know like what they tell you and they would always use false names and dress in disguises. Some of the false names include Francis Rod, R-A-U-D, and Alicia Bunk. And Francis Rod, when they signed it, would be F Rod, like fraud. And Alicia Bunk would be always a bunk. And so no one could really tell it was them coming in, because obviously they were part of these traveling shows, right. like they were famous, you know? And then he would debunk everyone on stage when he went into town. <laughs> <laughs> I love that for him. So he'd walk in, um, walk straight into town, do his like his act, and then in the middle of it be like, by the way, I'm going to do this new thing, and show everybody what the trick was, and then be like, if you want to see more, go check out this person over here. <laughs> and he would call them out. <laughs> Damn. Um, and together, Rose and Houdini had investigated over like a thousand mediums. All of them were frauds. They didn't find one that they thought was real. And Rose did testify in court cases, like I said, and even before Congress. She worked as a stenographer at a law office and as an investigator in general. And she did say that originally she believed that psychics and fortune tellers were real. But after doing all of this, obviously she didn't anymore. And so um, she would write detailed reports for him. And eventually these spiritualists obviously got very angry <laughs> with them and their team. And so Houdini supposedly carried a small gun on him and he advised Rose to do the same, but she refused. So they were expecting people to be hot on their heels trying to kill them pretty much yeah so he would carry one um he did end up passing 
but it wasn't because someone came to murder him. And I'll discuss that later on. Um, but Rose Mackenberg was nicknamed the Rev because of the multiple bogus spiritualist diplomas and titles she had acquired during investigations. I don't know what the Rev means. I'm sure it's just like a high and mighty title, like a reverend is what I'm assuming, but I'm not quite sure. Um, the first session of the 69th Congress had to go over this anti-fortune telling law for Washington, D.C. What? <laughs> In February of 1926. It was called the Copeland Bloom Bill, and Houdini was to testify for it to pass. It was basically a bill that he wanted to pass to make it illegal for all of these fake mediums to practice. <laughs> Fair enough. So, um... This bill targeted people like Jane B. Coates and Madame Grace Marcia, who were scheduled to testify against the bill, and they were mediums. Uh, Coates revealed that senators went to her for readings and that seances were held at the White House with President Coolidge. <laughs> so she was like, you can't make this illegal. The Makes president is doing it. Makes real bad. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like the president is doing this. You can't make it illegal. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not cool. Yeah, like the so... 4th of July. <laughs> so, um, not that Coolidge, but close enough. Close um, enough. So it, it did not pass, obviously. Although Houdini really wanted it to pass. And he was so um, adamant that spiritualism was not a thing that he set up codes with more than 20 of his friends and his wife to attempt to communicate with them after death. So he was like, I'm going to, if I die first, smart. then if you go see a medium or if someone approaches you and tells you that I'm here <laughs> and I want to talk to you, I have to say these exact words. And if I don't, it's not me and vice versa. So, um, okay. so if like his wife or his friends died first, like it was all confirmed and they would have to say a specific set of words verbatim or else it wasn't real. Fair enough. And so in 1943, his wife passed without ever receiving a confirmed message from Houdini. At some point there was a fake one, but it was debunked that, um, Somehow, like, the words that he was supposed to say to her specifically were released in, like, an article somewhere. So oh. so they were, like, she was really upset. She was, like, I'm, I'm done. Like, we're, this is a failure. We're not doing this anymore. So she was pretty pissed. Um, and then in 1945, Rose Mackenberg also confirmed that no message had come through. So um, after his death, Rose Mackenberg did continue investigating for about 20 years. She was attempting to educate the public on psychic fraud by touring the country, giving lectures and writing more articles. And she ended up dying in April of 1968. So with all that being said, one of the biggest cases that Houdini was part of was the case of the blonde witch of Lime Street, whose name was Mina Crandon. She also went by Marjorie the Medium. And this brings back Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, whom her husband, Dr. Crandon, reached out to because she expressed this, like, gift of being able to speak to the dead. And as we know, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was, like, super into spiritualism. So he was like, sweet, okay, let me tell my friends over here um, about you at the Society of Psychical Research they have this contest going on, like, uh, you're a shoo-in, let's do this. And she was married to a doctor, so no one thought that she really needed to make money scamming people. And um, she would often refuse payment when people came in to see her. So she became really popular. People were like, she can't just be doing this for clout, you know? Right. Like, she's already rich. <laughs> Why else would you do this for fun? Yeah. Why? Why? Okay, so they were like... She must be real. And in 1924 uh, was the beginning of the longest and most publicized confrontation between Houdini and a medium. So it was 
between um, her and Houdini. She lived in Boston. And like I said, she would often go by Marjorie the medium. She was 36 years old and she was married to a very prominent surgeon in Boston. And she was a very serious contender for this prize offered by the Scientific American Magazine. Um, it was going to be offered to the first medium who could produce conclusive psychic manifestations under specific test conditions. Wow. And again, I wanted to look up the test conditions, like specifically what, what the parameters were, but I didn't have time to. So I'll have to do that on another episode. But um, the Scientific American magazine was chaired. Oh, my gosh. I have like a hair on my face. Do you see it? Get it off me. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry. The magazine was chaired by a J. Malcolm Bird and a what? J. Malcolm Bird. Oh. That's his name. Okay. <laughs> a bird. It's like J. Malcolm Bird. <laughs> Whoa, what kind of bird is that? <laughs> a fake one. <laughs> um, and it also included a psychologist. William McDougall, who uh, <laughs> went to Harvard, and also a former MIT physicist, Daniel Comstock, and then also two members of the Society of Psychical Research, which were Hereward, Carrington, and Walter Prince. So very esteemed people are part of the society, um, people that have degrees, like educated people. So it's not just like random woo-woo people <laughs> random woo-woo people <laughs> so um obviously a very esteemed society houdini was one of these investigators the prize was twenty five hundred dollars a whopping twenty five hundred dollars in the 1900s and bird and carrington had already examined marjorie more than 20 times and they were ready to give her the money they were like wow you won. <laughs> Um, rumors went around that Houdini had been stumped and they were like, oh, she's going to get this money. Like Houdini oh. thinks she's real. And he was pissed because he hadn't even seen her <laughs> <laughs> and he hadn't attended not one of her seances. So he was like, I'm going to stop all these rumors that, um, someone has finally duped me and I'm going to go see this bitch. <laughs> Good. And, um, so she was renowned for conjuring the voice of her dead brother, whose name was Walter. And he would tip tables. He would tap messages like on the table. Uh, he would sound trumpets, which again would either be the voices or it'd be like an actual like noisemaker sort of thing. And he would often speak in a really gruff, like disembodied voice. So people would characterize him as completely different from Marjorie. And so they thought like, that's another reason she couldn't be faking because they were so different and he was like often rude and she was so sweet and right. stuff like that. So she was also famously known for producing a very viscous substance that she called ectoplasm from her orifices. Oh, I remember this. <laughs> well, I have pictures this time. Ew. <laughs> It's not as bad as you think. Ew. Um, and it was actually debunked. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, there were photos, or I guess there are photos, of the ectoplasm coming out of her nose, her ears, and also from underneath her kimono. And, Ew. And like from her groin area, is as it was described. And she described it as an ectoplasmic hand that Walter used to manipulate objects in the physical world. So I'll show you pictures. It, when I first thought of ectoplasm, I thought, and it also viscous substance, I thought it was going to be more like mucus. Like really thick. That's like, what I would think like it snot, would be. You know, right? It does not look like that at all. Some of the pictures look like that, like out of her like facial area. <laughs> The disembodied hand does not look like that at all. So when Houdini came to visit her, she greeted the panel. It was like, it was not just him, like several people came with him and she greeted them. She took her seat within a three-sided Chinese screen. So like <laughs> one of those tall screens and she dimmed the lights. Um, what makes it Chinese? I don't know. <laughs> 
maybe the design on it. I don't know. <laughs> I think of like Mulan when she's in the bath, like that screen, you know, like the foldable one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, there is reportedly an eerie whistling filling the room. And on cue, Walter would whisper his arrival. And Houdini said that he was even touched on the inside of his right leg by Walter. And so after, Houdini's believing this for a minute. <laughs> oh. um, after a short little break, he ordered an electric bell enclosed in a wooden box and brought to Houdini's feet. And he would ring this bell with supposedly like no one touching it. And, you know, Houdini was so close to it. They were like, oh, he's going to like he's going to believe that no one, no one else is touching it. Like Walter's ringing this bell. Um. And then Walter levitated a megaphone and boomed through the megaphone, have Houdini tell me where to throw it. <laughs> so he was talking through the megaphone, which is what I'm assuming this trumpet thing is. Mm. And uh, Houdini said, throw it towards me. And so then the megaphone flew through the air and it landed right in front of him. And throughout the evening, Walter produced a sequence of metaphysical spectacles. He would ring the bell in the box on command. He tipped over the wooden screen, like usual tricks that people will do in these situations. And Houdini knew that her husband, the doctor, Dr. Leroy Crandon, um, would always sit on her right side. And... This doctor was also Harvard educated. He was a surgeon and he was one of her greatest promoters. He mm. would often supposedly show visitors nude photographs of his wife in her like seance, like wear, which is like a sheer like coat, like kimono. Why? Oh, he's probably a weirdo. <laughs> Ew, fucking creep. Um, and then Houdini also guessed correctly that he would be seated left of her in the circle with their hands touching feet and legs touching okay so their hands were joined feet and legs were touching so like all of their limbs <laughs> were touching each other basically and so in preparation for this evening houdini was a little weasel Ooh. he put a tight bandage on his right knee and he wore it all day so that his leg would be very sensitive to touch. Very sensitive. Smart. <laughs> you know when you get the pins and needles and someone touches mm -hmm. you and you're like, oh, yeah. And it was so painful to him that it made his skin so tender that even the slightest touch would, like, he would know. So, since this was happening, anytime something happened, he could feel Marjorie twisting and flexing her body in the dark as she moved her left ankle slightly to get to the bell box under the table. And later he felt her shift again to tip the Chinese screen with her foot. Mm. So some people, I guess, are really talented. They make really slight movements. You can't really tell that they're moving. Also has a lot to do with like sleight of hand, which is yeah, what like Houdini magician. was talking yeah. about. Yeah, But he could feel it because he already knew what was happening. Yeah. Um, and he's like, I can't prove it with my eyeballs, but I'm he's gonna like the it. greatest magician of all time. So, yeah, yeah. so he was like, um, you're fake and he, you're fake, but he was stumped by the flying megaphone. He was like, I don't know how she did that shit string, <laughs> um, for a few hours only, but then he figured it out. <laughs> he figured out that Marjorie put it on her head. The megaphone dunce cap style. Like a dunce cap. What? <laughs> and with a momentarily free hand, because her husband was holding the other hand. So who's to say she wasn't holding his hand? And oh. it was dark, so no one could see. And then he was like, she must have jerked her head in his direction and sent it crashing to the floor in front of me. And he can see because it's dark as fuck. <laughs> 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 so so he, he nailed it pretty much, you know? He's like, I got you. And... He was like, I got this bitch. Like, I'm going to go see her a second time <laughs> just to just to make sure. Yeah. And at the second seance, it was at a Boston hotel. It featured a levitating table. 
And during the seance, he reached out in the darkness <laughs> and found her head lifting the table. <laughs> And again, he felt her legs move as she reached to ring the bell box. <laughs> Imagine reaching under the table in the dark and you like poke someone's eye out. Like, <laughs> oops, sorry, I didn't know you were there. Um, Imagine being caught. <laughs> so That's so embarrassing. So he's like, cut your red hand. <laughs> I don't know what she did. She got really mad. Well, that evidently. would make me so embarrassed. I'd be like, oh my God, Houdini just got me. <laughs> <laughs> lifting the table with my head. Yes, yes. But remember, supposedly, I don't know why she would think this. She thought that he, in solidarity, he'd be like, it's okay, I'm not going to tell on you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. Right? I don't know why she thought that, but reportedly she did. Well, because she um, probably thinks that Houdini is doing the same exact stuff. She probably thought f- he was impressed, like, mm, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, okay, you, you earn this money. You put your head yeah. under a table. <laughs> like, <laughs> and also probably that <laughs> He, she was probably like, oh, well, he does this to people all the time. But probably. he doesn't actually, like, yeah, mess he with does people's heads. For entertainment purposes. <laughs> and he makes that clear. <laughs> and he tells people he's an illusionist. Yeah. He's not like, this is real. Um, yeah, this lady's <laughs> like, look at this table move. And she's <laughs> under it. Like, Ooh, <laughs> that is a talent that I am not sure I possess. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm impressed. With your head. I, I don't listen, think I could do that either. I would love. I can't tell you how to much I would to love to table on your head. No, <laughs> how much I would love to go see somebody who could do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do it. I'm already injured. You just want to watch someone to lift the table on their head? No, I want someone to try and trick me. Like oh. I'll, pay, I'll pay them good money to lift the table with their head. I just <laughs> would like to know if they can do it. <laughs> I'm sure now. Damn, Marjorie they're... must have been a strong ass bitch. Listen, she that's what head. I'm saying. Damn. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. How big is this table? <laughs> I don't know. Big enough to hold like three people holding oh, hands. Wow, that's a big table. At least, at least three people. He had a panel with him, so it was like him, her, her husband, and like probably two other people. Oh my god. So like a pretty big table, I'm assuming. <laughs> Um, Damn. Now I'm sure they have like mechanisms, like in the movie that we saw, um, Ouija. Um, when we first recorded this and we left, um, yes. like they had a whole mechanism thing of things moving. I'm sure people do that now instead of lifting the table with their head. <laughs> but let me tell you back in the day, <laughs> listen, anyone who wants to give me, um, a little, a little show, I'll pay you extra <laughs> if you do it with your head. <laughs> okay. It's a one-time offer. And one time offer. it's not a euphemism. So... <laughs> So Houdini was like, I got you. Um, he announced his findings to the committee. And because they were ready to give her the money, right? And they were like, let's hold off on telling the public about this. I don't want them to know just yet. They were conflicted. Why? They were like, he thinks she's fake. Literally everyone else on our committee thinks she's real. So who do we believe? And so... Don't they, tell me they gave Marjorie the money. No, they didn't. Okay, good. They didn't. They took several months to finalize a decision, but Houdini took it upon himself to post a pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I love him. <laughs> and it was an expose called Houdini Exposes the Tricks Used by the Boston Medium Marjorie. <laughs> Damn. Complete with drawings of how she produced the manifestations. He went all out into this girl. Dude, good for him. He was like, absolutely not. <laughs> um, and then he began reproducing her miracles and performances <laughs> across the nation. Just mocking her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have much. a lot of respect for him for that because she was preying on vulnerable people and he just went and was like, no. <laughs> She lifted that table with her head. At this point, she's a performer. If I were her, I would have been like, you know what? You're right. But I put on a good show. So pay me for the show at least. And I'm sure people would have still gone to see the spectacle. No, definitely. There's nothing else to do. (laughs) You might as well (laughs) go see a woman lift a head with a table with her head. Or you see Houdini doing trapeze. That's true. (laughs) So um, he posted this pamphlet. Obviously, she did not like it. They did post a response, but in February, they started declining any further tests, and that's when the magazine finally decided that they were going to deny her the prize. Good. And 
when they refused to award her the prize after s- several additional seances before she was like, we're done. Um, spiritualists were enraged. Her supporters were so mad. And so Why? was Walter, <laughs> her brother. <laughs> Wait, her brother's dead. Yeah. So, oh, so if, he was mad. In her seances, she, because she would often, like his voice, he'd often come out in these seances, like, and talk to people. And so. Through the trumpet. Mm-hmm. And so um, he stated in one of these seances, Houdini, you goddamn son of a bitch. <laughs> I put a curse on you now that will follow you every day for the rest of your short <laughs> life. <laughs> wow, that's not obvious at all. <laughs> Very angry. He was pissed. <laughs> How dare you silence me? <laughs> and um, Bird and Carrington, is the other people, part of this magazine that were investigating her pretty closely continued to report that she had supernatural powers. So again, they were still pretty divided. But in October, the Scientific American American published an article that described the committee as, you know, divided. So they did eventually um, not give her the money. They eventually like said, she, she it's not her, like, sorry, <laughs> sorry about it. She's a fraud. And um, Houdini was obviously banned from setting foot on her property ever again. <laughs> Otherwise, Marguerite's gonna come out with the trumpet. (laughs) Who did it? Yeah. So, in 1925, a Harvard faculty formed an investigative team which skeptically witnessed new manifestations of her talents, which included a jumping paper donut. I don't know what that means. (laughs) And I refuse to elaborate. A jumping paper donut. <laughs> One investigator reported that he'd witnessed her reaching underneath her dress and pulling out a strand of fake ectoplasm, which appeared to be butcher's offal, which is guts. Ew! So. Oh my god, that's disgusting. Ugh, not only is Marjorie a fraud, but she's a disgusting pig. <laughs> so, let me show you these pictures. And I will post these pictures on Instagram. We'll post them on TikTok. I'll try to include them in this YouTube video, but I'm still figuring out how to do that. So don't come for me. They'll be posted somewhere. Um, okay, so here are the ectoplasm. Wait, is that it? No, there's more. Oh. I just need to show you these photos. That's the hand. What? Do you see how it's coming out from like... Arbidus? <laughs> yes. So I got four fingers. Yeah, so that's... So how many fingers did Walter have? I guess four. I don't know. That's oh. the hand. The hand was reported to be faked. Like, they confirmed Obviously. it. Obviously. It was li- like a liver. Like, an animal liver. That Ew! Had, that had been sewed to look like that. So they think that her husband, being a surgeon, mm. just started, like, messing with things. To <laughs> make it look Ew! Human. Some people do think that he performed surgery on her to make a little pocket where she could hold this hand. Ew, ew, But that was never confirmed (laughs) because she refused examinations. So this is the ectoplasm that was on her face, supposedly. What? It looks like like tissue. Yeah, it looks like animal fat, you know? So, but this is the kimono that she would wear. The sheer one? The sheer one. She doesn't look naked there. I don't... I think she's naked under this, like, robe kimono sort of thing. Um, That's her in the box that Houdini put her in. (laughs) (laughs) So that she couldn't trick him. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I thought that you'd get a kick out of that one. I do. I love that. Um, Here's more of the hand. Coming out from under her dress, kimono, whatever it is. But you can tell she's not wearing clothes under there, so. And she often refused to wear, like, she refused to wear tights during the seances. Because she got a hand in her puss. (laughs) So (laughs) people were like, obviously, you're just hiding that in there. It's not materializing. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, so you're nowhere. hiding something in there. Um, and then this is the fingerprint that eventually became her downfall from her dentist. What? So this is um, like a mold that dentists use to get teeth oh, molds, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. and she used it to fake a fingerprint from Walter. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> lots of fun surprises she has up her vagina, I guess. <laughs> so, not her slaves. So, like I said, allegations were made by some conjuring historians that her surgeon has been had altered her genitalia so that she conceal <laughs> so that she could conceal his hand. Um, the hand didn't move after it appeared on the table, so it would just like lay there, and she couldn't like. She couldn't flop it around. She didn't have the <laughs> muscles connected, I guess. Um, and then supposedly it would like vanish, um, front, like in the. Well, wasn't it dark? Yeah. So she, they turned the lights on. So like, it just goes the sun back up under her puss. Yeah. I guess. Um, so like I said, she refused to wear tights. She refused to be internally searched. Um, there was no proof that her husband had ever surgically altered her. And they lived so, together. Obviously, there's not going to be any fucking proof. Yeah. So. Um, it only appeared the hand when she sat next to her husband who held or controlled her right hand. So obviously one of them could have like, you know, pulled it out of her <laughs> husband's hand. <laughs> maybe, maybe. That would be unfortunate. You know, like a four fingers. The pictures. Not much movement there. People, <laughs> obviously people t- would like would touch Such it. for Marjorie. Maybe that's why she went into this business. Well, there are, she, well, <laughs> She didn't claim, but some people claimed that after she got got, she would continue these seances. They, she was still really popular, but some people think it was because her husband forced her to because it was like a spectacle for him. And like we said, like he would show photographs of her naked body to people that would come in. So maybe he was just a weirdo. <laughs> he was a perv. Um, and they would touch this, like people that came in would touch the hand and they'd be like, it feels dead because it was obviously dead. <laughs> So well, it also wasn't a hand. Yeah, it was an animal liver. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So biologists examined it and found it to be made out of a piece of carved animal liver. Which obviously he, in his surgical um, experience, could make look like a hand. It did look like a piece of meat that someone just. Butchered <laughs> to look like a hand. I'm not gonna lie. I was looking at these pictures when I was redoing this research, and I was like, "People were tricked by it. like people believe." Yeah, this. I'm just so confused by. Maybe like... It's really dark in there. I mean, I'm freaking blind, so maybe I would be. Okay, tricked. yeah, know. but I would never trust anyone that is saying that stuff and in the complete darkness. I could never. I mean, these people were pretty. They wanted to believe that it was real because well, they the wanted problem. to communicate with their loved ones. So they were like, it must be. Plus, there's something about that time where people just really loved that spectacle of like a sh- being tricked. So that's why they would go see Houdini because they'd be like, right. oh, you know. Yeah, but, but that is okay. But people sitting here telling you like, oh, my brother's hand's coming out of here right now. It's all right <laughs> here. And it's really just a fucking animal liver. Like, that's sick. Like, that's gross. It is sick. It is gross. But it, you have to admit it's pretty genius of them. Well, if people are believing it, then yeah, that's pretty genius. I mean, I'd say they made a lot of money, but she obviously didn't take money all the time. They didn't need it. I think they just probably wanted to be famous. In my, I mean, he was a friggin' surgeon. In my opinion, I think he was just a weirdo. I think, I her think husband he was, was a creep. Just a weirdo, and he liked the voyeurism. He liked the spectacle. He liked the that secrecy. People, yeah, he liked that people thought that they were special. He liked the rush. I don't know if he necessarily forced her to continue after everything was caught to be fake, but well, I'm pretty sure that if this whole like pocket in her genitals thing is true i'm pretty sure she didn't ask him to have that that's true it was probably his idea yeah pretty sure he was like hey you know what would make this look good put a little pocket in (laughs) your brother's hand coming out of your (laughs) dress okay 
you know what would make this more convincing? Your brother's hand coming out of your dress. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> anyway, so some people, <laughs> like I said, I don't know if she performed the seances nude. She probably would undress a little bit in the darkness to be able to move that stuff around. But a lot of people think that these rumors were just attributed to sexualized slander of mediums because, like I said, it was a lot of females in this time. They wanted, they liked, they enjoyed the power. Like, they got power over Well, I would, too, if I was being literally, like, treated like shit for years and then all of a sudden I have this skill or skill that people listen to me. Yeah. I would probably too. So people just think that maybe that's a rumor that was meant to like, I don't know, make her look bad. I don't know. That she had a hand out of her book? <laughs> that she was naked in public? I don't know. Oh. Okay. Um, I don't know. But that was something she that came She should be out. hanged. <laughs> you know how Walter got really mad and was like, you're cursed. Not going to survive yeah. for very long, right? Um, so Houdini did in fact not survive for very long after that. He passed away How many years pretty later? shortly after. Literally, I think a few months after. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Literally. Um, yes. In August of 1926, Walter proclaimed to an audience that Houdini will be gone by Halloween. And he indeed was gone on Halloween. He was killed in 1926 by Marjorie from septic poisoning. What does that mean? So throughout his career, Houdini was known for pulling off this really wicked trick where he'd be like, punch me as hard as you can right here. And it wouldn't hurt in his stomach area. And what he would do is you can contort your muscle, like you can tense your muscles up so that when someone hits you, it won't hurt. And like I said, he was a really strong guy, very agile, so he could control his muscles to make it so that it wouldn't hurt if someone punched you that hard. And he would just have people do this all the time. And in one show on Halloween, he had someone come up um, who isn't confirmed to be one of these spiritualists, but people think that this was on mm. purpose. And she punched him before he could tense up. She punched him so hard that she ruptured his appendix. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> and it killed him because obviously what your appendix shit? ruptures. Damn. So that's, that's a strong ass hoe. That's how he died. It was a student from Montreal. She threw a punch before he could tense up, and it <laughs> ruptured his appendix, and it led to an infection that eventually killed him. Um, that same day. Because when your appendix that's ruptures, fishy. it's really like that's fishy. It's very fishy. So, I guess he was fair in his assumption that people were going to come after him with carrying the gun <laughs> because they didn't even have to carry a gun. <laughs> they just had to carry their fists. I guess not. I mean, she was a student, so maybe she was educated. Maybe she knew if I hit him before he tenses up, maybe like, it'll it'll hurt him at least. I don't know well, if she meant to kill him, but <laughs> what was she like a like a bodybuilder? Because punching someone so hard that you rupture their appendix that. I mean, he had been, had people punching him for like a lot yeah. for a long time. So it was he was probably like his appendix was about to rupture, right? Probably, and that hit just like <laughs> I just find that really hard to believe that some some girl know. in school just <laughs> pop and he's like dead. I don't know, but he as she ruptured his like he died from septic poisoning. He must have. So, I mean, or, there must have been unless some someone sort of, lied on his you know, autopsy report. There <laughs> must have been some sort of like secret thing going on there for sure. I mean, oh yeah, it was. I for sure think it was a conspiracy to kill him. 100%. I don't think it was on accident. Um, but you know, after that prediction from Walter, everyone was like, "Oh, like he's real. He oh. knew." He knew. Um, Marjorie. So, yes. Um, and then his dear friend, Sir Arthur, Arthur Conan Doyle, did live on for four more years, and he died a believer in the spiritualism stuff still. and In Marjorie? Yeah, he believed in Marjorie. Ugh. And supposedly he would appear to her very often, like during her seances. Um, and in 1930... Did he have a hand, too? 
I don't think so. I think that was oh, okay. specifically her brother's hand. That's even worse. <laughs> um, in 1930, Bird, who was one of the investigators on that team that he was working with, did turn in a report denouncing Marjorie as a fraud. He confessed that she had asked him to be her accomplice, <gasps> which is what Harry had deduced. Like, he was like, she has to be working with someone oh. <laughs> inside, you know? Um, and then, like I said, her reputation was damaged the most by a fingerprint stunt, <laughs> in which one of Walter's fingerprints turned out to be her dentist's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And then Malcolm Bird did admit that he was helping her produce, um, like helping her be Walter and produce specific things during and these produce seances. produce hands out of her vagina. Yeah. And no, that was her husband that was helping <clears throat> that. Sorry. I guess. Um, <laughs> so after quite a long illness, her husband did pass in 1939. And she apparently became very depressed after that. Um, Houdini did say that he had a spy that had been in, like, I don't know, he was, the spy was talking to Marjorie at some point, and she was saying that um, she only became a medium to save her marriage when her husband became bored with her. (laughs) So that's where these rumors came about. According to the spy, Dr. Crandon had become so infatuated infatuated with her mediumship that... um, he would brutalize her to force her to invent new and better things. Anyway, in 1941, at the age of 53, she did pass as well. And her last words, because reporters did oh, come God. in and ask her, was this real? Was this all a ruse? Tell us. Tell us the truth. You're about to die. <laughs> <Pretty> <laughs> much. And she said, you can go to hell. <laughs> All you psychic researchers can go to hell. Why don't you guess? You'll all be guessing for the rest of your lives. Damn. And she died. (laughs) And we're still guessing. I guess. Although, if it was real, I guess someone could have reached out to her and confirmed this. That's true. But I guess Walter's not coming back through anyone else's vagina. (laughs) I'm so glad for that one. (laughs) Walter's a perv. (laughs) Um, And that's the end of my story. There were some extras in there for you. So let us know what you guys think. Was Marjorie real? Was she fake? Was Walter's hand real? Was <laughs> Did she have a pocket? Anyway, um, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. <laughs> Watch I, out. For- I would like to remove this whole conversation <laughs> from my brain as well as from my personal devices. Well, this is going to so- bother me forever. I need to know. <laughs> So you can look that up on your own time. I'm not here for that kind of research. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm curious. You can put that on your Google algorithm. Okay. I'm not a I'm perv. Not I'm just curious. I don't want it on mine. <laughs> I have enough. <laughs> Weird shit. On mine. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> thanks for joining us. We will see you next week where hopefully nothing will fail. (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully nothing will be coming out of people's genitals. So goodbye. Good night. Enjoy your spirits.